counselor for the School of Social Work, Divinity, and Counseling here at Karen University. It's my pleasure to introduce our faculty presenters for today's webinar. Sharivet Matos is a bilingual licensed social worker who is serving the marginalized community for over 14 years in her private mental health counseling practice. She also serves as a board member on several community organizations and her church council. She is a Karen graduate and now serves as an adjunct professor at Karen University in the School of Social Work. Serving in such varying capacities, she has learned to live out time management skills and is very excited to share these tools with you today. Becca Britton is a licensed clinical social worker who has been working in the profession for over 20 years. She works in private practice settings with couples, families, and individuals, as well as school settings with children and teens to address mental health needs. Becca was able to attend Karen for her undergraduate studies and has also been able to serve as an adjunct professor here at Karen University in the School of Social Work. She also serves as a worship leader at her local church. Time management and health and healthy self-care are two skills that she is constantly refining, refining and growing in, and she loves to discuss and share these ideas with others. In today's webinar, Sharivet and Becca will lead a reflective discussion on forming a holistic framework for effective time management. We are excited to have them with us today. Before I turn things over to them, I wanna draw your attention to the chat at the bottom of your screen. Throughout the webinar, you are welcome to submit any questions that you may have through the chat and we'll leave some time at the end to address as many of those questions as we can. At this time, I'm going to turn things over to Becca and Shari Vett. Thank you so much, Glenn. Um, Shari Vett and I are so excited to be here with you this afternoon, and we really appreciate you taking the time um, to set aside some time to have this discussion. How do we work wiser and not harder? And to ask questions about what is holistic um, time management. So, we are grateful and we're hoping that this is the start of a conversation. And so in order to do that, let's look at what our purposes are today. Um, the first purpose that we wanna look at today is, I'm gonna, my first purpose is getting, there we go, getting my screen to move. Um, the first purpose that we're gonna cover today is we want to help you be more intentional with your time through first trying to understand time, how you view it, where your beliefs and your views come from. Then we're going to look at understanding yourself. Um, so in order to be able to integrate holistic, uh, mind, a holistic mindset with time management, you really have to know yourself. And so we're gonna work through that with the perspective of time. And then finally, we're gonna look at what is your understanding of your relationship with time so that when we give you some options of tools that you can potentially integrate to your life, you can have a better understanding of time yourself and then actually how you relate to time. So hopefully those things um, will be helpful for you in how you can actually feel better about the use of your time and that it's, if it's not healthy at this point, how you can move towards health. We are, the slides I think as people are coming in, it's just making a little, making it a bit slow with my ability to move forward. There we go. So Sherebet's going to engage us in a discussion with these pictures. Thank you guys for having me and uh, sharing with me today. 
So I'm just, I just really want to jump in, right? As Becca was sharing with us today, we're talking about understanding time. And so if you could just briefly for a couple seconds, take a peek at these images, I'd like for you to really just engage with the pictures and ask yourself um, how they make you feel. How do these pictures make you feel? Just a few, few seconds. right there in your own space, right? As I'm looking at these images, for example, when we look at the city view here, um, I can place myself in this city view and the movement of the cars, I can always, as we say, hear the noise of the city, the hustle and bustle, right? I look at the, the on April 15th date that flashes to the right of this image and I feel pressure. I feel like I have to I have to commit to something or have to finish something by a certain time or be somewhere by a certain time. It makes me a little anxious to be to be really with real with you. It makes me feel a little overwhelmed. Um, I as I move towards another image, and this might be things that you're feeling. I I can kind of really relate best with the picture of the of the woman with the children. In my perspective, it would be add add three more children to that that back picture there. That would be me, right? With three more, five total. Um, the the amazing coffee cup. That's the really what I call my liquid juice in the morning. That's my 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 power uh, to kind of help me get going, right? With a busy day. Um, and and honestly, with with COVID, this looks like us, right? Some of us, right? It could be us. Um, the iPad the 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 screen the 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 um computer it makes me feel like i have to be more responsible to be honest it's just another feeling of being overwhelmed or maybe you know with the image of the young lady here that's just looking at the clock maybe bored um maybe too much time or maybe just stagnant right uh or languished right um Becca, which one of these, Becca, which one of these would you say you can connect with really briefly for us? Um, I think for me, it is a combination of the woman on the computer because I feel like I'm on the computer a lot, um, but then also the city, that hustle and bustle, the constant. Yes. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, you guys all here online could, 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 identify with these pictures and where they really kind of make you feel so so understanding time and feeling right um so we understand that time can make us feel things in a way right it can make us feel things it also really starts to form this belief we have beliefs around time right so um i want you to walk with me um and please join me in chat this is where we can kind of start interacting here um what do you believe about time? What are your beliefs about time? And, and please, whatever thoughts pop in your mind, just shoot them over to the chat. I'm gonna look down there, just giving you a little time um, to talk to me, right? Um, you know, here's one for us to give you an idea. Time is precious, right? Time is precious. Um, right? I've, Miss Amy, I think I could see time is valuable, right? Ooh, these are coming in quick. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> um, um, there's not enough time. Someone sharing, um, Miss Emily saying there's not enough time. Miss, Miss Elaine is saying time goes fast, right? Um, Miss Rachel saying, often I could tell what my priorities are um, with where I'm spending my time, right? Um, what else do we have, Miss Becca? What else do we have too, right, with, with time? And what, we're, our, what Becca and I came up with, right? God has given us, Miss Mary is saying, God has given us a time to redeem. This is more important than things. Very interesting, right? This idea of what you're saying, Miss Mary, absolutely. Um, Ms. Serrano is saying, you can't get it back. You cannot get it back. Um, and so 
as we're, I even think about phrases. So we have up here, guys, thank you so much for, for, for working with us here, right? Time is valuable we have up here. We have time should be productive. Some of us think this way. Time is a resource. Um, it can feel like it's fleeting. Need to take advantage of some uh, time because it's so quick. Absolutely. That was Miss Mary Valise, right? Um, time is money. Mm. Mm. Time is money, right? Um, and so we have phrases and things. And so let us really shift ourselves towards, Becca, what do you think? Help us out. We have some beliefs around it as well. So you go, let us know. So a lot of what everyone shared in the chat that it goes by as quickly that we want to redeem the time that God has given us. Um, these are things that are all true and they're beautiful. And we just wanted to take a minute to think about where did we get our beliefs? Where did we get our values about time? Because our beliefs and our values about time, they are what lead us into the behaviors of how we use our time. And so if we are gonna talk about time management, we really need to go back and say, well, what do we believe? Are those beliefs something that, is, that are actually true? Or are they beliefs that, are, that should be challenged? So in order for you to be able to have that conversation, we wanna talk about where do we get our beliefs from? And so one of the places that we get our beliefs from is culture. Um, when we say culture, we're talking um, culture at large, the Western culture, or the culture that um, maybe you have come from, from a, another country or somewhere in the East or the Southern hemisphere. A lot of our values and beliefs about time come from our family, our core, where we grew up, how they demonstrated their use of time. And our faith actually plays into a lot of beliefs, like someone had shared we should redeem the time that God has given us. So let's talk just for a couple minutes about these categories. Sherevet and I are just going to have an interactive discussion about that. Um, and we really want to look at when you're thinking about these three places um, that we get our beliefs and values from, we want to think about productivity and values in each of these areas. So the Western culture. The Western culture has a very different mindset about productivity in, in our use of time than the Eastern culture. So thinking through um, some of the phrases that we went over in the last slide, the idea that time is money. There is this idea that there is equality with our time and our money. In other cultures, relationships, like time is relationship. And in other cultures, it could be time is health. So it's thinking through what are your beliefs, where do your beliefs come from, from both our Western culture, as well as the culture that you have come from personally. Um, so that is, that's the start for culture. And again, we're just starting these conversations. We would love to just sit individually with each one of you and talk it out and work it out. But to start this conversation, um, we're just gonna ask some questions and encourage you to continue the conversation with yourself or others. Mm -hmm. So then if we wanna jump down to family, um, oh, actually I wanna jump into value in culture, sorry. When we talk about what is valuable in our culture or what is valuable in your specific culture, um, there is a lot of variety. Some the, the Western culture, if we're going back to time is money, some people are really valuing work because of the value of money. However, that isn't true for everybody. Um, some cultures really value rest, value time to be with friends and family. So we're going back to that idea of what is productive and what is valuable. So those two questions wrestling with what do you believe about what is valuable and what is productive in the culture at large and then your culture. And Sherevet is going to share a little bit with her family and families, how do we view and ask questions about how your beliefs have formed from your family. Absolutely. So as Becca was sharing, 
the different forms of culture. For me, I'm Latina, right? A woman, Latina. I grew up, right? Um, looking at culture very differently with time. So as I was sharing with Becca on this uh, about the, the notion of productivity in family, I was like, it's a role for me. It's not necessarily something that I would put on a list and check off, you see. So for our culture, I grew up, my mom said, hey, we have to get ready. You got, I got to teach you how to clean. I got to teach you how to cook. I got to teach you how to manage your household because you need to be great. So when it's your turn, you're not coming back to me, <laughs> right? And so the role that I in, you know, incorporated with was, I don't have a list that says chores and cooking and cleaning. And I don't have a list. That's part of my life part of who I am as a woman, as a Latina. And really the value that I put into that is also connected with that. So when I spend time doing these things, it's not a task for me. It's really me integrating my life. So it's a, it's a, 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 a way of me sharing my time with my family. And the more they appreciate it, the more I want to do it. Right. So it's like this different kind of perspective on looking um, at that productivity and culture. And of course, um, you know, faith, right? Faith is very much integrated in also how you look at time, right? How I, I believe in time. So I think of Ecclesiastics 312, right? And we know this, there's a time for everything, right? A time and a season, a time to, to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, and you guys can go ahead and continue to read the text at your leisure, right? But you know that there's a time for things. And so if that's a platform of faith, that there's a time for everything, and I believe, right, um, that my steps were ordained by God, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that in that kind of context, then I should not worry because the scripture also says that I should cast my anxieties upon the Lord. Right. And so when I manage that time and that belief, it really makes a difference in what I'm listing and how I'm actually functioning with time. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we want to really just kind of form for you, you know, a foundational framework and maybe just kind of really rethink, uh, when we go back to our, our slide of what we believe, right, about time, we want to define it. And we want to say, can we say that time is a gift? Right? Um, and I want to be respectful of the fact that maybe for, for, for some people, that might not necessarily sit well or be true, right? Um, because we know, for example, COVID hit, yes? And we know that um, some people who are in long-term care uh, um, might be experiencing time in a different way than we are, right? Illness, end of life. Um, it, it doesn't seem like a gift when that's what's happening for you. Becca, what do you think, right? Yeah, and with COVID, it's also, we saw that image of the girl looking at the clock and this idea of languishing. And there are a lot of people who have really felt stuck in time and not knowing how to use it productively. And so we're gonna address that. We're in this very strange age. It's either all or nothing. Um, and But looking at, if we can take a step back and all of the things that you shared in, in the chat and hopefully the phrases that we've threw up there, time is precious, it's valuable, even time is money, it's a gift. It's a way to be able to um, interact with the creation um, and our God that we're, we're here on earth with. So um, we really want to encourage you with the idea that time is a gift. And um, if we want to look at some scriptures in Matthew uh, 6, 21. Um, it says, Christ said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So this idea of prioritizing, and someone mentioned that in the chat, and we want to 
help you think through how to actually live out those values and the beliefs, the things that you do actually prioritize. Um, maybe it's living for the kingdom or, and what does that look like? How can you do it and not feel so um, frustrated possibly by the, the push and the pull? Um, and then in Psalms 90, 12, it says, so teach us to number our days that we get a heart of wisdom. And this really was part of the driving force, work wiser, not harder, take a step back, numbering our days in the sense of reflecting as reflecting on the idea that time is a gift and how do we then um, take that gift and care for it and be able to know how we wanna use it and share it um, with others. Hey, Becca, can we pause a little bit too and kind of chime in on how people even look at it you know, in the gift fashion where we know that socially it changed for us, right? Mm -hmm. um, COVID changed how we, how we experience the connection, right, mm -hmm. with time. The other thing is too, from a parent's lens, maybe there might be some parents out here. I often go to the store with my, my tribe of five. <laughs> and uh, when I go, I often get, enjoy it, it goes by fast. I get that all the time. Of course, in my in the moment, I'm like, it can't go fast enough. But <laughs> you know, you know, it's just some real space that we're in at times, right? And so then I, I reflect back on that. I say, you know what? There are treasures, right? Because for me, that's where I spend my time, right? The gift that God has given me to have my children and to spend it in the roles that I play with them, you know. So yeah, I mean. I totally, you know, agree with you, but I think it's helpful for us to, you know, have these thoughts, look at time, time is a gift and just kind of encompass it and, and then try to figure out, you know, why um, is understanding this important, right, for ourselves? What, do you, what, do you, what would you say about that? How, how does all of this help us, uh, Miss Becca, understand ourselves? What's going on with it? So what we want to do is if you can take a look at your values and beliefs and then know what you actually believe and how you can, oops, how you can then assess, are these beliefs true? Are they things that I want to work out of? Um, then if they are, then you can move forward. And we're gonna talk about how to understand yourself in a holistic perspective. And if they're not, I'm gonna encourage you to push into that and see if you can get to the root of, well, what do I actually believe then? If, do I believe that um, time should be productive or time should be balanced? Like ask yourself for those questions because um, your beliefs and your values are gonna produce your behaviors and the actual use of your time. So once you've done that, then you're gonna, we're gonna encourage you to step into this next phase and that's understanding yourself. So to understand yourself, we're gonna ask you to do it from a perspective of a holistic mindset. When we talk about holistic mindsets, um, we are really looking at the whole. You're literally seeing it if you replace the E with the I, the whole of like the whole person, um, you want to, instead of looking at one ingredient in a recipe, you want to think of it as all the ingredients and how they interact together. So that when I make bread, the yeast and the water, they are interacting together and they're producing this wonderful aroma and taste. Um, and if I look at the yeast and the water separately, they are completely different. So we need to acknowledge the individuality of the ingredients, acknowledge the different parts of your life, acknowledge your emotions, acknowledge your physicality, acknowledge your mind and your mindset. But then we need to, um, we're going to encourage you to integrate those. And that's the holistic perspective. It's how they interact together. So if you look at the first definition here, uh, Merriam West Webster Dictionary says holistic as related to or concerned with holes or with complete systems rather than the analysis, treatment of, or dissection into parts. So again, it's just the interaction, those systems of how they're interacting. And then Harold Taylor, who is um, probably one of the um, experts 
on holistic time management. And we refer to him at the end, there's a resource page. Um, but he says that holistic time management is applying the strategies necessary to lead a happier, healthier, longer, more productive and fulfilling life. So we're really um, just taking that idea of the parts, putting them together and then applying them. What I do want to just mention is this little phrase, it's not cutting everything out that's unnecessary. A lot of times we, it's like a diet mentality. We're like, oh, I have to cut the things that are unnecessary. That can really actually be dangerous and maybe backfire on you. So we're going to give you some strategies at the end of how to consider um, what is actually helpful to keep in your schedule. Um, and your use of time, what's healthy, and what could be hurtful. So we want to build this self-knowledge. So let's talk about how to build this self-knowledge. Sherevet, do you want to, as soon as my screen wants to move. I move. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little tricky today. Okay, nope, it's not what I want. There, that's what I want. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, as Becca was saying, this self-knowledge. And so just to kind of unpack a little bit of systems, just, just to give you a little working definition here, okay? Um, in social work, uh, us social workers, right? We use the systems theory, okay? And, and what is this systems theory? It's really a, what we use is we, we, we use this to practice with individuals to view them holistically, to better understand their behavior, okay? And it's almost like putting this puzzle, right, together. We look at this puzzle, and we, it, it, we know that when we put the puzzle together, we get a bigger picture, right, of the individual. Uh, this helps us really understand a person's behavior and their choices. And so we really use the systems theory all the time, as much as we can, right, to understand a person. And Becca kindly shared with us uh, cooking, right, and baking. And so the example also is like baking a cake. Right. If you want to look at it that in that angle, uh, where you have your ingredients, right? Those would be the flowers, you know, the 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 egg, the the um. What else goes into a cake, people? <laughs> Vanilla, milk, oil, and all of that stuff. I would be making tres leches. You know, that's a little different ingredients, but you know, all the ingredient systems, right? So those are systems, right? And then we have um the cake when it when the cake is formed right it's the complex system that we're talking about the whole right so becca did a great job um bringing that into a vision for us but we want to also tell you that you are unique Ta -da! <laughs> right you are unique and you you have your own system and so i want to ask somebody uh in the audience right yeah. so brave person who might want to engage in uh, a little question with me, a questionnaire here, right? Where we can reflect on your time, your system use, right? Any, any, any takers? And you guys can help me here on, uh, to let me know who's, 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 who's raising a hand or who's volunteering. And that individual will unmute themselves as I have a conversation or Becca and I can have a conversation with the volunteer, who would that be? Oh, Lizzie, you raised your hand. <laughs> Only if nobody else wants to go. Oh, Lizzie, it's so good to see you. What's up? It's good to see you guys. <laughs> Likewise, Miss Lizzie. Let's 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 hang out, Miss Lizzie, right? Um, we have our, our internal and external, right? Reflection of our system. So let me ask you a, a few questions. And, and, and Ms. Becca will help us also, right? Let me ask you, what is your life stage? And, and what, I'm, what I'm referring to is, where do you see yourself? Uh, young, mature, I don't wanna say old, right? Mature, <laughs> right? Um, what, retired, still work, where, where are you in the gamut of your life? Yes, I am a very young professional <laughs> and yeah. young in general. <laughs> Um, so young, right? There's yeah. a check mark. Boom. It also, right, Miss Becca, what does that do when we when we when we're looking at our systems with our time? So when you're um, younger, you may be interacting socially differently than if you're at a 
uh, middle age or let's say your parents and you're going to soccer games and or you're going to parent teacher conferences or you're older and you're going to more doctor's appointments just because um, there are complications um, as, as we get older. Um, so it impacts the activities that we're involved in. So I'm guessing as Lizzie gets to interact, um, it's impacting her, her stage of life is gonna impact who she wants to hang out with and what she might be interested in doing at this particular stage of her life. Yes, thank you, Miss Becca. What environment do you live in, uh, Miss Lizzie? Is it royal, is it urban? Where are we at? Um, I live in an urban environment in a house with five other young women. Mm. All right. Yes, yes. So you answered the other question, right? Who do you live with? Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, perfect. Oh, that's okay. That's, that's okay. We're assessing, right? We're, we're taking a peek here and, and, and your work through this makes their use of time differently than other people. That's why we're focusing on this. It is unique to you. And that is okay. That is okay, right? Where do you, where do you work? Uh, do you have multiple jobs? Where do you work at? Yeah, I work at Esperanza Health Center in North Philly. Yeah. Right? Even your interaction at work. Right, Miss Becca? Yeah. So, Lizzie, how do you get to work or to other places? Um, I either ride my bike or drive a car. Okay. So, just even when you're in an urban setting, and that's part of why we asked rural so there's a different mindset often in a city suburban or rural setting so it really can set a tone for how you view time and how you fit into your the time um, that's given and then honestly just how you trans how you do transportation riding your bike is a very different experience than driving a car um, so these are just things to consider um, and living with five women that that's probably gonna impact your time, um, not negatively or positively. There's no, this is just, it. does it impact your time living with? Oh, it certainly does. Okay, all right, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, now, has how has COVID impacted your time? Um, and, oh geez, that's a very complex. Okay, yeah. Okay. Can you give us one example? Um, well, in some senses, it's, it's, it's given me a lot more space to just kind of like, because I'm working from home mostly. Um, and so that gives more space for flexibility because I'm not at a spot. Um, and in other senses, it's, it's given me a lot more um, busyness because I work in healthcare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's almost like a dual. It, you've got some some more flexibility but it's complicated things um with the needs and all the things coming up for other people and then do you feel like you're engaged in activities um that are restful at this point um that is a thing that is incredibly low on my priority list okay and do you feel like you're engaged in things or time spent that bring you joy yeah great thank you um and again, that is some of the, you're getting, how you're using your time, it's impacting your mood. So if it's, you're having time spent doing things that bring you joy, that is going to hopefully um, improve your mood, which actually improves your health and, and all the things. Um, so the other, another thing that we're gonna talk about um, is your biorhythm. How much sleep would you say you need, Lizzie? Um, a solid eight hours. Okay. So that's a pretty average. Um, so actually more like nine. If you would prefer nine. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so as, as you guys are listening to Lizzie, give her answers. You can think about how much sleep do you need? Am I getting that sleep for young moms? That can be virtually impossible. Um, and then it, are there other things that have been impacting, um, your sleep? And then we're going to talk about how that can potentially change. Um, Lizzie, do you know if you're an introvert, extrovert, or ambivert, ambivert? You know, I would have called myself an extrovert for my whole entire life up until last year um, okay. when I realized that the influence of living with an introverted family for four years and then uh, going through quarantine with them 
um, and then having more flexibility in light of vaccinations and all these other things in life in general, definitely leaning more towards introvert these days. Okay. All right. So a little bit of self-awareness or some change as you, as you live life out. Um, and that's just going to impact how much you want to be social with people and the impact that's going to have on your mood. Um, and COVID's impacted that. And then do you know if you're left brain or right brain? I think, I think I'm left brained, but I forget which is which. So there is actually a photo or it's a picture um, on, on this slide that kind of breaks down left brain and right brain. And the reason that we put this on here is because as you are looking at knowing yourself, we're going to give you some strategies later. And um, a lot of times people are going to say, hey, just do X, Y, and Z. And most of those things feel very left brain. So if you're a right brain person, it can be very frustrating um, to figure out how do I fit and how do I do this in a way that works for me. Um, and if you're a left brain person, um, sometimes you, it's just trying to figure out what works for you in this left brain. So um, if you feel free to take a look that left brain structured, methodical, more organized and goals and time limits, whereas the right brain is more creative and flexible. Um, so as we kind of push into the um, understanding of yourself, Sherebet, can you walk us through, um, we, we have a, a resource that um, you can do for yourself. Thank you, Lizzie, so much. That was wonderful. Well done, brave soul. Um, and um, I wish I could, well, I could clap for you. <laughs> yeah. um, we want to ask you to consider um, looking at some other areas of your life. So we're looking at doing an activity to help you, again, look at the system theory, look at, it, look at you as a person to know yourself from a holistic perspective. And so Sherebet's going to walk us through uh, an activity that we're calling spheres. Um, and it's looking at potentially all of these different areas, um, and you can call them spheres in your life, health, family, um, social, work, sleep, hobbies, faith, housekeeping and homekeeping and finances. Um, and she's going to use herself as an example to kind of walk us through this. Yay. I get to be transparent with you guys, huh? <laughs> Exposure. Um, so yeah. So as we're looking at these fears, take this example as a way, again, to make an assessment of self, just a different way that we did, you know, we had the questionnaire before. Now this is a way to look at it in the spheres. I kind of like the vision. We get to kind of get a gauge as to how big or how small um, our areas um, are and, and look at it as a form of um, what area of your life is starving, right? What needs to be fed, right? So for myself, my tiniest fear right now, and maybe might be the same for you guys, but this was also pre, pre COVID just to be real with you guys, right? My social sphere is small. Um, I just don't have a lot of time to, um, to really work this out the way I'd like. I, I promise I'm a good friend. I promise <laughs> anybody would be a friend, right? But uh, my, my social sphere is, is, is tiny. And so, um, you know, this might be an area that I might look into if I'm really making an assessment of myself and say, hmm, um, is that, is it healthy for me? Again, we, we always want to make sure that we go right back to the self. It looks different for different people. And that is okay. For me, it got it needs to get a little bigger. I gotta say, it, Becca. I gotta say, it's gotta get a little bigger, right? And so, as we continue, my next sphere, if it comes, <laughs> I know it's it's my computer is being a little special today. Yes. yes. Well, I think it should be hobbies. Oh, there they, they all popped on. Oh, don't don't expose me too quickly. No, that's that's like the cart before the horse. There yeah, we go. Much people, right? Um, next one would be hobbies, right? Now, in hobbies for me, I would love to be able. I you know I sing, I play a little this, a little that, and instruments here. They you know not not a pro in anything, right? But I like it, right? And so I would like to engage in those activities for myself. Um, um, at one point, if you got to, if you get to meet me in person ever, people, I am five, one, my husband says I'm not, 
but I am, I'm tiny and I played basketball. Yes, I did. And so I would like to play again. Actually, a couple of years ago, I hurt myself playing, but it is a hobby that I really, really enjoy. Um, and it really relaxes me. Right. And, but it is, it, it is lately in my life, a sphere that is not as, as uh, pronounced as I want it to be, or as active as I want to be. Right. And then my next sphere that's, that needs some work for myself. These are my own assessments is health. Right. <laughs> um, and that would just be my selection. I mean, you guys know, I just mentioned I'm Latina. We eat a lot of good foods. They're greasy, but they're good, <laughs> right? And so I gotta be mindful of all of that. My food intake, um, my exercise, my rest. I do well with rest. I have to say, I do well. I have a lot of manpower. They help me rest. But, um, but this is an area that I would like to, again, see maybe in a different uh, dimension, if you will, right? Um, and we're gonna see sleep. I'm comfortable with this size right? Once you see it on the screen, <laughs> I'm comfortable with, once you see a pop, there, oh, there it is, sleep. I'm going to leave the rest of them up there and let you do it. I'm okay with that sleep size. I'm, I'm, I'm like Lizzie, you know, eight, nine hours, fresh and ready to go. My biorhythm, you know, I'm an early bird. Early bird catches the fish is what they say. So, I wake up early. I do my thing. At night, it starts to get, you know, Becca knows, at night, it starts to get a little, oh, it, it's a little much, right? And then I have a couple of kiddos that I got to attend to. So, so I feel like my sleep is good, is, is good where it is. I don't think I would change that, even though for you in image, it might be not where you might want it to be, right? Um, so somebody says, I can't say, but thank you for providing this. I have a good rest of the day. Oh, thank you. Someone was, is leaving. Sorry. So I was taking a peek at the, at the, making sure we're not ignoring anybody. Um, thank you, Bob. I believe is Bob. So my sphere for my faith, I'm a worshiper, uh, speaker. Um, I like it to be a little bigger. I do. I mean, it, it, if you see, it's really, um, you know, connected to everything. These are networks, right? We're all, they're all interconnected here. And you notice that my family life, though I've been, I mentioned before, is my thing, right? My mother, a wife, daughter, caretaker. It is pretty big. It's where I spend a lot of my, my connection in. And I really do value that right now in my life as a young 21 year old. <laughs> it's like I'm just playing with you guys, <laughs> right? In my young life, I'm a worker, social worker, therapist, a, a professional. That is big. And I don't see that minimizing right now. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think I can shrink it, Becca. I, I don't think I can shrink it right now. Is that okay? Yeah, so I think the thing that's really important as you are doing a self-assessment, um, so as Sharavet just shared with us, it, this isn't about judging your work spheres. This is about assessing them and evaluating, is this healthy? Does this match with my beliefs and my values? Is this, something that I want to continue in. And what are the, th if it is, the fantastic. And if it's not, and if you're joining us today, I'm guessing there are some questions about um, use of time and your relationship with time. What are the things that you would like to see potentially change? But yes, share of it, to answer your question, if work is at a comfortable place for you, then yeah, work is a beautiful thing. God created us for work and it's something that hopefully we can enjoy. Um, so thank you for walking us through that share of that. And we're, I would encourage you to go ahead and do that for yourself. Again, um, I'm going to email a list of resources at the end and just provide a step-by-step -step for this. Um, but the other, another way to assess your time is much more classic. And I do this with clients, um, actually in session. So an example, if my screen, whoops, there you go. It gets super excited, um, is just a very detailed calendar. So one of the strategies at the end is actually going to be, um, considering doing using a calendar and time blocking. Um, but in order to do that, you have to start with something. So this is an example pared down of something I did with one of my students. And we just wanted to look at where she was at in terms of how she spent her time. And you're gonna notice there's a lot of downtime, very little social time. Um, and 
there's a little bit of music time and creative time. So this gave her, and she's a student, so she spends most of her time in, in the school setting, which would be work, but you could um, call it school. And again, it's not a right or a wrong, but it give, gives a conversation, a talking point of, is this healthy for me? And in my system, is it healthy? So um, creating a, and I'm, I'm gonna encourage you, if you do it, really make it as detailed as possible. And that might sound stressful for the left brain people, they might get excited for the right brain people, they might be a little more stressed about it, but um, it really can be useful. And so once you get an idea of what does my actual use of time look like, if I'm going to actually break it down into spheres, what are my roles within these spheres? Am I a mom? Am I a caretaker? Um, am I a social worker? Am I a friend? And, and then you potentially do a calendar. Let's look at what is your relationship with time? What does it look like? So we've talked about knowing where your beliefs and values are coming from about time, then assessing, assess your system, that's the next step. And then um, what do you wanna see change? Um, then after you've done that, you go, okay, I wanna see some stuff change, what do I do? What do I do with that information? And the, things that we're going to encourage you to do is first, ask some questions. What has to stay? I mean, for me, I am a single female who needs to work a lot. And I love my jobs, but that's a reality. So that has to stay for me. Another thing that has to stay for me is sleep. I end up probably should increase. So certain things in your schedule, they have to stay and you're going to have more limitations in certain areas depending on your life stage. So remember, we're keeping this holistic context, this holistic conversation with yourself. So asking yourself within my life stage, within my environments, um, within the people, the family I live with, or if I live by myself, what needs to stay? What do I need versus what do I want? Now, I'm not saying what you want is bad. That is not the purpose, but what are the blocks that have to stay? Sort of like the rocks in the jar versus the sand around the jar. What are the rocks that have to stay? What do you need versus what you want? What should stay? Some things don't have to stay, but they should stay. Uh, maybe exercise or some type of interaction with your health. What can go? And then asking some of the questions that are really a little bit more excellent. Um, what do you love? What brings you joy? What's life giving? And is your, your calendar possible to maintain? Um, and then if you take a look on the right, you're going to see some very, very practical um, things. Um, all of these different ideas to potentially just manage um, different areas of your time. Um, if you do decide to try the calendar idea, there is a great um, resource on, and we put her website at the end of the webinar at PowerPoint, um, but you can actually track and block your time. You actually wanna know what you're doing. So it's like a budget. You wanna track what you're actually doing. Um, so you're writing it down, but um, for a lot of us, it may kind of ebb and flow. It's not like a rigid um, thing. So you want to track and block your time. If you do decide to make changes in your rhythms and your relationship with time, please don't make more than three changes at once if you want it to be sustainable. It's too much in social work. We don't do more than three goals at a time, typically, because it's, it's just too much. Um, and then when you're going to have the conversation about what, what you want to put in your calendar, you want to overestimate what that time is going to take and leave room for yourself and also account for your humanness. It's you're going to have hard days. You're going to have days that you just are tired. And so giving yourself grace for that. Um, another thing that we do want to say, I'm going to let Sherevet say this because she does it um, beautifully. Um, our digital world, right? Use your apps, our phones, iPhones, uh, they have the ability to track what you're spending your time in, right? We, we saw before, wherever your heart is there, your treasure is, right? 
look at your apps, see what's going on. You might be spending a little too much time on YouTube, a little too much time, you know, on Netflix, whatever. People are doing so many different things, but if you use your app, take a look at it. It will tell you. Maybe you can kind of shave sometimes off of those areas, right? And, and, and set boundaries, right? Some people are asking about boundaries. The power of no. Can we say it together? No, right? I cannot do it, right? Introduce. The power of no can introduce balance. That's what we're talking about, right? When we want to ask, answer that balance question, I think that the power of no gives us the ability right? To, to begin to experience what balance looks like in our lives. And then the last thing we just wanted to acknowledge that, because um, I actually had a conversation with my sister who has been greatly affected by COVID um, and this idea that um, some people have this relationship with time that's very frustrating. They feel very um, in a place where they're languishing. There's a New York Times um, article on this that we uh, put into the resources as well. Um, so they, it's almost too much time and you don't feel like you know what to do with it because your world has been um, taken uh, out of its normalcy. So you really wanna look for small wins. You wanna find a flow. So when we're talking about setting a calendar and um, finding a flow, we're also looking at do what works for you. Don't try and make a calendar that looks pretty on paper, but you're not going to follow it. You really want to go with your natural rhythm. So if you're a night owl, plan to be a night owl. Don't say I'm going to get up at 530 and take a walk. Um, so I'm going to just there's permission to go with how God, you've been created by um, your creator and trying to figure out how that looks in the larger society can be a struggle. Um, and then be honest with yourself. Um, and then we do acknowledge, uh, but we obviously didn't have time, um, that self-care really plays into this, knowing yourself. Um, so there are some websites that I have used and I have used another webinars and people have found them to be helpful of how to do self-care, including, um, please feel free to use the webinar that Dr. Vasso did um, not too long ago for Karen. Um, so we just kind of gave you a lot of information. We do know that there were some questions that came up um, that Gwen is gonna be kind enough to ask us. Um, and Gwen, there was actually a couple questions that we didn't answer just because of time. Right. Um, would you like me to answer them really briefly first? You can, you can go ahead and do that, Becca, that's fine. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and Rachel, I see that and I'm glad you read that article. It's a, it's a fantastic, um, it is, um, it's, um, we do have a question that in the chat about the spheres, mm -hmm. about is it wrong for circles to not be equal, absolutely not. Um, the circles are gonna, like we're never gonna sleep as much as we work. That's, so the goal when Sherevet mentioned the goal being balance, it's not so much about the equality of the circles, it's the balance of the systems. It's the flow of the systems and is it healthy? So I use less baking powder than I do flour. But the interaction, um, the way it all interacts in the cake is, beautiful and so it's knowing what is healthy for you and what is sustainable so we're looking for that holistic healthy balance in time management but that doesn't mean full circles great mm -hmm. question is it possible to overbalance um i think it can be possible to focus so much on balance that you actually lose the perspective um so we acknowledge that there are different life stages and so right now Sherevet shared that she has five children. So her balance is gonna look different than my balance. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's really about trying to figure out what does balance look for you, look like for you now, not in mm -hmm. five years and not someone else's version of balance. Like the comparison game will really undermine you. You have to work in the system, the larger system of the culture of the job you work in. There's a, there's a time in and a time out. 
But within that, there is still flexibility for you to, how do you use your time at work? When do you take a lunch? Do you take a lunch? There's a lot of questions that um, you can ask yourself, is, is this healthy? Is this um, a healthy place? Um, there was a question about productivity versus busyness. Um, and I'm not exactly sure uh, what the, the definition of the two were for that. So Sherevet, please feel free to chime in. I think there is a difference because productivity is working towards something and busyness can be just doing something. And so productiveness actually has a purpose, whereas busyness is um, just doing sometimes for the sake of doing to feel like you you're doing something and feel productive, but is it productive? So I guess the question I would encourage you to ask is, is this purposeful? Because if it's not, then your time might be better spent resting or doing something that is life-giving and bringing joy to you. I totally agree, Becca, with that. Um, I would, I would define it exactly the same. I think that, you know, why be busy, right? For the sake of being busy. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that we're trying to connect here is how you use your time that makes you feel well while you're using your time, right? The present, be present, right? While you're doing, well, I'm cleaning and having a good time. I'm present doing that. I'm enjoying, right? As we were asking those questions, that could be rest, even though I'm being productive, if you will. But if I'm busy, I'm just checking things off of a list and I feel that that just drives stress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When there, there was a question about um, the idea of balancing between a lot of jobs and those being digital jobs, like having to- Yes, uh, yes, the question was, um, do you have any self-care tips to help balance both secular online work and counseling online work? Mm -hmm. um, especially on like marathon days, when this individual is saying that they're going from one job to the other and they have like 30 minutes. Sure. And so do you have any thoughts or suggestions of how to handle this when it's so much use of your eyes now? Mm -hmm because yeah. I think this person is using telehealth. Sure. So, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of us are in that boat. I mean, I, I personally can identify with this question. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's 12 hour days and you're meeting with um, secular work, student work um, during the first eight hours. And then you're doing another four hours of private counseling um, all, all via telehealth. So the idea, <laughs> some of the ideas that have been helpful for me is First of all, is there a way to decrease? I'm just going to start with that question. If it's too much, and so I need to ask myself the question, is this too much? Is there something I could reduce if it, it does feel like too much? Because COVID has shifted it, because it is, I'm sitting in front of a screen and that is different than interacting with a person. So I'm asking that question. If not, um, because I, I couldn't change that at that time, there are some simple things and some of them are making sure, like I bought blue light glasses. That was a self-care for me, um, mm -hmm. as silly as that might sound. Um, and then moving um, in that 30 minutes, making sure you're getting some good time to move, whether you're stretching um, or taking a short walk. Uh, it's nicer outside, so there's a little bit more chance of that. Um, making sure you're hydrated with water, caffeine, like I loved Sherevet's, her juice in the morning, but water is one of the healthiest things you can do for yourself mm. to regulate. Um, mm. And honestly, it, it might sound um, like it's just a, a throwaway, but deep breathing, if you're doing some deep breathing to relax yourself and regulate yourself, those things can be so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to sustain yourself on those marathon days. Um, I also would suggest too, like you were saying, be mindful of your body, right? Like you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, we're on the computer, we're like our shoulders, yeah. are tense, our backs are, you know, the stretching aspect is very helpful mm -hmm. um, to really kind of create a relief for sure. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. 
Very good, very good. And I think the other questions that were asked were centered around balancing of your time, how you prioritize. Like there's a question, how do you manage endless emails, emergency calls, and prioritizing your family over work? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think, you know, you address that in your presentation. Do you want to add any more to that? Well, it, I think it, it really can be person specific to some degree, but really assessing what, what is possible. Like if it is too much, um, what is possible? And then there are some strategies, like I have six emails. So I have a strategy for what works for me, um, but it, it won't work for everybody. So you, you really want to be mindful of what works for you? Um, so some people, they flag their emails. So I have to respond right away. And I have times of the day that I check each email. That is how I manage it. Um, that is impossible for everyone. So you really want to figure out what works for you. Um, and it, in terms of endless emails and like emergency calls, there that power of no for when you're done, if you're mm -hmm. going to prioritize your family, um, figuring out, okay, what does it look like for me to be able to be done um, mm -hmm. and not have to feel responsible for something that I may not be responsible for at that time. Mm -hmm. I am present with my family. This is what I want to prioritize because it is my beliefs and my values. And how do I, how do I know myself to be present in that moment? Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Thank you so much, Becca and um, Shari, that this was excellent. And we are just about out of time for today. So, but before we leave, we want to thank uh, Becca and uh, Shari Vett for such a very helpful and informative and interactive presentation and, and for their time with us today. Uh, these webinars that we've been having have been so resourceful and we will continue to offer them throughout the school year. We'll be sending you a link of today's webinar in a follow-up email and we encourage you to share it with anyone that you think may benefit from the content. And also, I would like to put a plug in for our Master of Social Work program. Our MSW program is a fully online, Christ-centered program that prepares advanced level social workers for a grace-driven relationship-based practice with individuals and families. Becca and Shari Vett, are excellent examples of the caliber of faculty that our social work students study under. And if you would like to learn more about our MSW program or any of our graduate programs, we ask that you visit our website to learn more or you can email admissions at karen.edu to speak to one of our admissions counselors. We're also currently enrolling um, for Karen's graduate programs for the upcoming summer and fall semesters. Our summer semester starts May 17th and our fall semester starts uh, August the 30th. If you're considering furthering your education or if you would even like to audit a class, we ask that you inquire today or you can email us at uh, admissions at karen.edu and we will be more than happy to contact you. We are so grateful that you were able to be a part of our webinar for today. And we hope that this time has been very helpful for you. And we look forward to having you join us the next time. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Gwen. Um, Thank you. Lizzie, can you hang on one second? We're, you actually get a giveaway because you volunteered. Wow, right? Yes. Yes. Wow, um, what a great privilege. You for <laughs> and your attention. Thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you all. For thank, you. thank you. Thank um, you. So Lizzie, we just wanted to say thank you for volunteering and for interacting with us. Um, and we, you can choose between a book or a um, planner, and we can talk about the planner, um, a book on holistic time management or a planner. So do you have a preference? Yeah, so I'm not gonna touch a planner. I had a feeling. <laughs> And I, I appreciate your self-knowledge on that, Lizzie. Uh, you, do you think you'd touch a book? 
I would touch a book. I do enjoy enjoy reading books. Excellent, excellent. Can I just grab, I know that Gwen has it, but it, would you mind giving me your address so I just have it? Yeah, it's 13, like my address address? Your address. Yeah, address. it's 1320. 1320? A-R-R-O-T-T -T uh -huh. Street. Okay. Philadelphia, 19124. Uh -huh. 19124. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I know it may not have been a big deal, but we appreciated it. Yeah, you know, I jumped in fast, but I was kind of like, ooh, Zoom silence is like more awkward than regular <laughs> silence. <laughs> it's a thing. It's a thing. It's, it's even better in class, let me tell you. I can't imagine. <laughs> It's special. It's special. So if you were in the class, I would love to have you in my class because we wouldn't have awkward Zoom silences. Hey, bring me in anytime. Just let me know. <laughs> All right. You got it. You're great, Lizzie. Yes. Great. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.